Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord with me. Hallelujah. God is worthy. Hallelujah. We're shouting unto the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy of our praises, worthy of the glory and honor. It is another day that the Lord has blessed us. He has woke us up this morning to see his beautiful sun ray, sunshine, and we are grateful to the almighty God for who he is and how much he loves us. Amen. So we're shouting unto the Lord this morning, giving him glory, giving him honor, and giving him praise. Amen. Welcome to Faith Deliverance Worship Center. I'm Pastor Linda M. D. Signora. Thank you for inviting us into your homes today. We have come to give God all the glory. And we're going to start off this morning in prayer. We want to uh, begin our day as we you do at home. We want to begin with prayer. So I switched up a little bit. We're not going to do praise and worship first. We're going to begin praying, communicating with our God, with our Heavenly Father, thanking Him for who He is. And there's things that we need to be reminded of, to be praying for. Of course, some of you we uh, may have known, or some of you may not know, Mother Pearl Greg has gone, home, gone on home to be with the Lord. And we want to continue to lift up Patty and the rest of her siblings and to uh, God to continue to comfort them and just keep them as they wait for the services to happen. We know God is able. We are also lifting up all our sick and shut in lists, and we thank God for what he's doing in their lives. And we want to continue to lift up our nation with the government. So many things are happening with our government. So many things are dealing with the unemployment, uh, just the protests, the racism. So there's many, many things that are happening, and we want to continue to lift up the Lord. And also, we're lifting up our church family, one of our family members, Christian Faith Assembly, and the loss of their beloved pastor, their apostle, Maurice Randolph. So we want to keep them and family, his family, in prayer as well. I'm going to ask Deaconess Mabel Roberts if she would come this morning and take us before the throne this morning. Amen? Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Glory Jesus. to you, God. Yes, hallelujah, Lord. hallelujah, yes, Lord. hallelujah. We just praise your name this morning. Praise your wonderful name, God. Yes. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for who you are, Lord. Mm -hmm. We know that you are God all by yourself, Lord. We know, God, that there is nothing too hard for you. And God, we said this morning, yes. thank you, Lord. Letting you know, God, that we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you for loving us us, oh God, with that everlasting love. We serve a God that is mighty. We serve an awesome God. So Lord, we thank you, God, as we give you the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And as the pastor said, that is so much that's going on in the world today, God. But Lord, one thing we need to do, God, is just continue to thank you, God. Continue to praise your wonderful name, God, because we know that greater are you that's in us that he that's in this world. So God, we said thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name, God, as we continue to look to the hills from which cometh our help. So Lord, we said thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for just allowing us to see another day. You didn't have to do it, but you did. You allowed us to get out of bed to do the things that we have to do, God. Thank you, Lord, for all our working limbs and all our working organs, oh God. We just praise your name, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all our needs according to your riches and glory. So God, we said thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Even as we come before you, God, uh, tell, asking you, God, we know that you are in the White House, oh God. Continue, Lord, to have your way in the White House, oh God. Touch our president right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch his hat cabinet, oh God and all the cabinet members oh God. Touch the senators and the representatives oh God. Let them come oh God on one accord oh God. Meeting the needs of the people oh God. So Lord we thank you for touching this morning oh God. Oh God all the injustice that's going on in the world today God. All the racism that's going on oh God. We ask you Lord to come in oh God. Intervene God like never before God. Only you 
you can set things right, God. But we trust you, Lord, with all our hearts. And we lean not to our own understanding. Your word tells us, oh God, that you have called us, oh God. The people that you have called by your name. If we will humble ourselves, pray, seek your face, turn from our evil ways. Then you will hear from heaven. Forgive our sins and heal the land. Oh God, we need you today, God. And we said thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing the land today, God. Thank you, Lord, for healing your people, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being with the bereaved families, oh God. Touch their hearts, oh God. Oh God, send your word of encouragement to them, oh God. Send your word of strength, oh God. And Lord, we said thank you, Lord. Let not their death be in vain, oh God. That somebody that know you, God, somebody that don't know you, God. Oh, by their death, oh God, they will call on your name, God, and say, what must I do to be saved? Save, oh God, like never before, Lord. Let not the death be in vain. And Lord, we thank you for salvation this morning. We thank you for saving this morning, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for healing this morning, God. Let your healing brought virtues flow down, God, like never before, God. Touching, oh God. Touching the sick, Lord. Touching the afflicted, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for your healing virtues, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Because we know there is power in the name of Jesus. And God, we said thank you, Lord. Touch each and every person that's on our sick list, oh God. Lord, you know each and every one and who they are, Lord. We thank you for your healing virtues, oh God. We thank you, Lord. And we just praise your holy name this morning, God. We thank you for who you are, Lord. We bless your name this morning, God. Because we serve a mighty God. We serve a healing God. We serve a good, good, good God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the Psalms have said, how great you are, Lord. How great is your faithfulness, oh God. We said thank you, Lord, because you are great in our eyes, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that we can call upon your name any time, day or night. And we just praise your holy name. Thank you for our pastor this morning, God. Thank you, Lord, for the words that's going to come out of her mouth this morning, God. Oh, go through her lips of clay, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I know what the words that you want her to say, God. Use her, God, this morning for your glory, God. Use her, God, like never before, God. Use her, God, during times like this, oh God. Anoint her first, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for our family. Oh God, thank you for each and every one, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you have your way this morning, God, because we are living in dangerous and trying times, oh God, perilous times, oh God. But one thing we know, God, that if it wasn't for you being on our side, we don't know what we'll do. But thank you, God, for being on our side this morning, oh God. Thank you, God, for holding us up this morning, oh God. God. Thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. So, God, you have your way throughout this world today, God. Move by your spirit, oh God, like never before. And, God, we said thank you. Thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. So, we praise God for who he is, and we thank him for who he is. In Jesus' name, with thanksgiving, yes. amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's give the Lord praise. Hallelujah, he's worthy. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah, you're worthy. Yes, there's no one like you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, in spite of all that's going on, we know God to be able. In spite of whatever's happening in our lives, what's circling around us, God is able. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's sing this morning. He is able. Hallelujah. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think.
according to the power that's working within us. Amen. Come on. Yes, above all. He's a great God. We serve a great God.
able. Woo! Yes, God is able. When I wanted to give up, when I wanted to give in, when I wanted to throw in the towel, Lord, you wouldn't let me. I knew you to be able. Hallelujah. I called upon your name, and God, you came in with your spirit, and God, you rescued me. Lord, you're able. You're able, God. Hallelujah. I thank you that I surrendered all to you. I thank you that you're my rock. I thank you that you're my refuge. I thank you that you're my strength. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. Hallelujah. The Lord is worthy. Yes, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. One day we're just going to be singing on Sunday morning. We ain't going to do nothing else but just sing of the goodness of our Lord. How good he is. How able he is. How mighty he is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I feel like praising him this morning. I feel like shouting unto the Lord today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nobody like our God. Nobody like Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to switch up here a little bit. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, audio team. Hallelujah. But I wonder if you could play shout to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Could you there's nobody like our God. The theme song that we introduction with, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just think of his majesty, how great he is. And I just want to praise him and give him glory today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody needs to praise him today. Somebody needs to shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're making this personal. Hallelujah. My Jesus. My Savior. Woo! Yes, Lord. There's none like you. Yes. All of my days. Woo! I want to praise you, Lord. Your mighty, mighty love. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, yes. My comfort. My comfort.
Thank you, Lord. There's no one like Jesus. Hallelujah. No one like our God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, this is a day that God has made, and we're rejoicing, and we're glad in it. And this is a day that we celebrate Christ, that we come and celebrate him. We may not be physically together in this building, but we're joining together in one accord, calling upon his name and acknowledging him for who he is. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. And we just want to thank him this morning and give him praise. We want to give him all the honor because he's worthy of the glory, worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Shackles are being broken down. Strongholds are being broken down. Things are being breaking off. Chains are being ripped off those that are bound today because the saints are God are gathering together in one accord wherever you're at in your homes in your car in the building and we're crying out to our God we're shouting to him because he is our victor he is our victorious one hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah glory to God hallelujah I feel like just praising him this morning I just feel like giving him thanks because he's so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but it's been a trying last week. So many things have happened. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I believe God just wants us to declare to him how much we love him, how much we need him. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise his name this morning because he is worthy. Hallelujah. We'll play my last song at the end. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God is just so good today. I tell you, when you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you, just like the song says, your soul cries out, hallelujah. You thank God for saving you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be before you long this morning. Because, all, like I said, last week was a trying week. You know, um, he, he, he ever had a, dreams or has the Lord ever woken you up? And you just can't quite figure out what's happening, but you know something is happening. Even when you're praying and you're asking God, you know, what is your desire for me to pray? What is your will for me to tap into with this prayer? And even when you do that, you still go out today, you say, something is about to happen. Things are just not, doesn't seem right, but God is just to, has you waking up several days in a row and just has you praying, and then you, you sit there and you're waiting, you, got, you know something is about to happen. And that's how uh, the week before last week, I felt like that the Lord was dealing with me and I was just waking up and I felt like something is gonna happen, Lord. Something, situation, whether it's directly with me or members in the church, and I began to lift up everyone in the ministry here because I felt like something was going to happen. And so things that are moving in the atmosphere and with the shootings, and it's so hard, you hear the shootings of the babies being killed and people shooting in the streets of cities like it's the wild, wild west, and with no regard for life and who's around them and even for their lives, and that disturbs you. And then the government can't make a decision on whether to give people benefits who are out of work and they don't, they don't have any um, way means of getting monies, they're furloughed, and so all that weighs on you. And then you hear the death of loved ones in the midst of you in the, in the church. And even though they, they've gone on to be with the Lord and you're happy that they're no longer suffering, but still you're going to miss them and the memories linger and, and you, you miss them in your heart. And, then you start thinking about your own family members that you have lost. And, and then the close one hearing about Apostle Randolph yesterday that kind of shook me up because he was part of the fellowship that we were in. I was in the pastors of fellowship, and he was doing the teaching, teaching us younger pastors. And we all wanted to be like him, take a page from his book and how he was taking vacation. And some were, can't wait to get to that point where they could do that in their ministry and not let the cares and the ministry just pull on them. And he was guiding us as pastors and 
teaching us, and it was a wonderful fellowship and to hear that he has gone on to be with the Lord. Yes, we're happy, but yes, we're sad at the same time. So there's so many things that are going on. And then as I was reading in the news, and I heard that Michelle Obama tell, talking about how depression had, the little depression had, 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 had tried to come in and through this COVID uh, quarantine. And, and I started thinking about it, and I'm listening to my daughter, uh, how she was disappointed that she was not able to go back to school as much as we probably were happy that she's not going back, but looking at her and how much they desire to be in school. And so I started thinking about all the young kids and, and, and everything that was going on. And through the midst of all that, I could hear the Lord say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And that's Psalms 27. And I remember that Psalms. That's the Psalm the Lord gave me when I was pregnant with my daughter, Zora. And he gave me this Psalm because I was fearful because of the two miscarriages that I had had before. But this one, he gave me Psalms 27 that I, he was my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He was letting me know that I didn't have to fear. So in the midst of all this that I'm saying that's going on, the Lord is letting us know he is our light and he is our salvation. We do not have to fear. So what he said to me was health check. We need to do health checks. We examine ourselves for breast cancer. If we have a lump in our, on our, in our bodies, women, and, you know, we do health examinations on ourselves. We, we check our sugars. Those of you that have diabetes, every morning you check your sugars and, you know, you make sure you're within that level. With me, I, we're checking, well, if you have high blood pressure, you're checking your blood pressure. So we need to do health checks. And I'm talking about mental health checks. These are things that we don't really like to talk about in the churches. We don't like to talk about mental illness. We don't like to talk about how we're mentally feeling. But Lord said it's important that we check on one another how we're doing mentally. This can be listening to the news and listening to the events that are happening and that it's going on in our lives can bring about depression. That spirit of depression is just waiting to come in and swoop down on you and swoop in your life. And you may have never been depressed before. before. You may have never experienced anxiety before. But God is letting you know that he is your light and your salvation. He is with you. And he will not allow this to come upon you. But you need to talk about You need to check with your loved ones within your home how they're doing. You need to find out. You need to talk about things. And you say, no, mentally I'm not right. I know on my job, we went through this virus on our job. Nobody knows what we went through being in a nursing home. They didn't tell our story. They may have told other people's story, but we experienced it. We lost, uh, uh, we lost members. We lost employees. We lost residents. And so the fear of it coming back around again and going through all that whole process again is dreadful. We don't want to go through that again. And to think that way, come back around again, it's dreadful because we're vulnerable. The people in there are vulnerable and susceptible. But God, he said, I am your light and your salvation. Whom shall you fear? That's my title today, and that's where I'm coming from. And I, and I was thought about that. The book of Psalms is one of the greatest scripture, the greatest gift of scriptures that God has blessed us with. It gives us language that we express our feelings. And if you look at David, he, he would tell how he felt. And he would, there were some highs, there were some mountain joys, and some valley lows, but yet... Even in his despair, and even when he expressed his anger, and even when he expressed his rage, God cleared his mind and cleared his thoughts and cleared the rest of the authors on the book of Psalms of their thoughts. And they let them know and they declared their allegiance to God and how great he was and how much they loved him. 
how awesome he was. So the book of Psalms is a good, great book. It's a gift that God has blessed us that we can go through. And we need a mental health day. Go to the book of Psalms. Let all those emotions and all the things that you're feeling come around you. I often think about Romans 8 when he talks about what can separate us from the love of God. And the enemy would like to bring a lot of things because, believe it or not, you can find yourself getting angry when certain loved ones have died. I know the coworker on my job, I just quite didn't understand it, why the Lord allowed him to die when there was still a chance for him to go. But I felt, and I felt the bitterness coming in my heart, and I had to rebuke that because I know God to love him. I know God to be a healer. I know God to be great and mighty. And I was not going to let allow the enemy to use that to separate me from the love of God. And that's the enemy's design plan today. It's to separate us, to allow all these things that we're seeing happening in our communities, in our lives, to separate us from God, to make us question our relationship with the Lord. So he says in Romans 8, verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for we are, for, you, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are more than a conqueror. As we're going through, we are more than conquerors through him because he loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, no powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And these are the promises that we have to stand on today, that nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm looking back at, and I could not get past Psalms, the first verse in Psalms 27. I tried to read on and to develop more of the message, but it was so powerful. The Lord is my, my light. I could not get past that. And I sang that literally in every situation that I came across last week. My, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And it was something that I was declaring unto God that I will trust you. I will trust you, Lord, until I die. I will trust you, Lord, in everything that I say and do. You know what is right. You know, God, what I need. You know, God, what I'm dealing with. And I will trust you with everything. My life is in your hands. Even in the midst of difficult circumstances, Lord, I will trust you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This past week, we had a power outage, and um, there was something to be without light. He didn't realize how much you, you know, it was fine when the sun was out. It was fine when, you know, daylight, but when the nighttime came and you couldn't see, you know, you really, you felt that insecurity about not having that light. See, light enables, uh, enables us to see. Without light, we're not able to enjoy all the beauty that God brings in the land. We need light. Light gives us a sense of security. And with that loss of power, I felt insecure. I felt, well, we need some flashlights. We need some candles. We need some light. We need it to see so the security that I felt that I needed. See, we have lights out on our, on, I don't know about you, but I have these the solar lights out on your yard to, 
protect the, the perimeters of your house. You have yard lights. You got porch lights to deter people from coming in and breaking in your house. Light is necessary. It's important most thing in the world. And if you notice, if you go back to Genesis, the first thing that God created was light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he created the sun and the moon and the stars. They, they bring light. We are dependent on light. We, we depend on our light for our inventions, and we need light for our convenience of life. Thank you, Jesus. So we thank God that he spoke light into existence. So when the psalmist says, David says here, the Lord is my life, he is making a declaration. He knows that God is light, but now he's made it personal. He's my light. He's my security. He's my, when I can't see, he's my eyes. He's my vision. He allows me to move even in the midst of darkness because his light is shining in me. He is my security blanket. You know, what, what is that, um, the peanuts, Linus, he had that, was it Linus that had the blanket? And he felt covered. You know how he felt when he had that, that, that blanket? He felt that nothing could harm him. And once that blanket was taken away, he, he felt insecure. He felt like, what am I going to do? I, he couldn't do anything. God is my light. He is my bright and morning star. He is what I need in my life. God is much the source of my life. Hallelujah. God is my all and all. So that's what he's saying. David has gone through some things here. He's gone through some turbulent times, and he's able to make this declaration, God is my light. I thank you, Lord. So when I feel like I'm depression is trying to come in, God, you are my light. You take care of my mind and my thoughts. You, you shine your light upon the area of my life that, you, that I need to get rid of, and I yield to your spirit, Lord, in your hand, and you set me free. Hallelujah. You're my light. Thank you, God. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for giving me sight. And with your light, you let me see my purpose and my meaning, my meaningful life in you, God, I thank you. So I couldn't get past, Lord, you're my light. I thought about my daughter, and I felt, and you could feel the depress depressive spirit in the atmosphere. You can feel it. You can feel the fearfulness that people may have during this time. You sense it, and it disturbed me in my spirit, and I didn't quite know what it was until I felt the heaviness of that depression, and when I read the article, I said, that's what's going on. And I'm listening to my daughter and her, her, her sounding in her voice of disappointment. And I said, no, I'm not going to allow the enemy to bring that depression on her. We're going to talk about it. We don't like to talk about people being depressed, and, and we don't like to talk about seeing and seeking help, and it's okay. Some are able to immediately just revive and get back up, but some need to talk to somebody about it. They need to sit on the couch, and some of us need a strong woman and strong men that we are. There are times we need just to sit before the Lord and let him work on our mind. Work on our heart, because there's so many things that are clouding us we can't hear and that can weigh us down. Thank you. I thought about Sister Mother McKee's song. You're the lifter of my head. You're my shield, O oh Lord, all around me. You're the lifter of my head. That is a psalm. You lift me up, O oh Lord, above all trials. You lift me up, O oh Lord, above all cares. You're my hiding place that I can run to. You're the lifter of my head. See, when you have your head down, you're walking in darkness. But when you lift your head up, he is light. 
Next thing he says in that same sentence or the same statement, declaration, my salvation. To the utmost, Jesus saves. To the utmost, Jesus saves. He will pick you up and he will turn you around. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus saves. Woo. I'm so glad that Jesus saved me. I'm so glad that Jesus saved me. He picked me up and he turned me around. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus saved me. Hallelujah. He's my salvation. The only way that men can be saved is through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Hebrew word for salvation, it carries many meanings in it. It means, the salvation means deliverance. You can, he can have easily said, God is my deliverer. But he said, my salvation. That meant he delivered me. He rescued me safely. He rescued me. He, he made me victorious. He, he is my refuge. He cared about my well-being, and he made me to prosper in him. I was dead when I didn't know who Jesus was. I was on a path of destruction. I was on a road to go to nowhere but to hell. But God saw fit to save me, to draw me in by his spirit, to deliver me from myself, to deliver my mind. Hallelujah. And so we need health checks today. We need our minds delivered today. We need our thoughts to line up with him. He is a deliverer. He can touch our minds. He can touch our hearts and make it right for his glory. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering me and rescuing me safely. You cared about my well-being. You cared about my soul. You cared about how I was living, how I was walking. Hallelujah. So we got many people out here today, dead, dead men and women walking because Jesus is not in their life. They don't know him to be a savior. They don't know that he's the salvation of their souls. David declared, he's my salvation. So when God has delivered you from things of this world and Almost on death's door, who shall you fear? What can fear do to you? God has illuminated his light upon your life. He's allowed you to see clearly. He's allowed you to see the beauty of his glory shining in your heart. And now he has delivered you and rescued you. What can you be fearful of? Hallelujah. Hallelujah messages to me because I was thinking, you know, you hear the things in the news and they do make you feel like we, we don't have no hope, especially with this virus coming down, people dying left and right that we know of. And it's by the grace of God that it hasn't touched us yet. I was talking to a, a pastor the, yesterday and um, let me know that eight members of their, their members had eight people that had had the virus. And I said, Jesus. And I said, thank you, Lord. We haven't had one here. Praise God. I'm not boasting, but I'm thanking God that God has kept you all safe and seen from danger, seen and unseen. Because this virus is an unseen, visible, invisible virus that is attacking the lives of people. But I thank God that he's kept us. Maybe people in our families have had it, but we have not had it. Hallelujah. He's our hiding place that we can run to. He is my refuge. That strength there is God is our stronghold. My Christ is my dwelling place. When I feel I'm about to crack up, I feel I'm about to lose it, I feel that I'm about to snap, I call upon 
on the name of the Lord and I get in my position and place in him and God just comforts me. He's my dwelling place that I can run to. When I feel the pressures and the cares of this world getting to me, when the church members are getting to me, when things aren't lining up right, I go to the Lord, the rock of my salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he renews my mind. He renews my strength. He is my stronghold. He is my strength. I can't make it without God today. I can't survive without the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's my rock of safety. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's what he's saying. See, David had experienced some things. People were after his life. Saul was after his life, ready to kill him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He had to hide in caves. Hallelujah. We may not have to hide in caves today, but we're hiding. We're we're being sheltered in in our homes right now for some. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And this invisible virus is out there. Some of us are afraid to even step outside of our door. Hallelujah. And it's weighing on our minds. We're afraid to even be in the store in contact with people. Got people going off on you. You're not socially distancing. Stay six feet apart. You, 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 you. People are, are reporting one another. You're not wearing your mask. Hallelujah. But God is my hiding place. He's my refuge. He's my strength. He gives me strength even in this hard time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not trying to tell you not to obey the laws of the land. And you do that. You make sure you social distance. And you make sure you wear your mask. These are the laws of the land. These are the things that you have to do. But we're not to be walking in fear. Hallelujah. This God is my light. And my salvation, whom shall I fear? He's the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? See, fear is always looming, looming around. The enemy is always, the devil is always trying to get us to be fearful. He gets us to be afraid to talk about mental illnesses. He gets us afraid to talk about things that are happening in our homes. And don't tell our business. We don't want them to know because we're afraid of having a a, a blemish or looking bad in the eyes of others. Hallelujah. Or or thinking that people may think less about us than what they thought of us before. Hallelujah. And that keeps us bound. But when the Son, S-O-N, has set you free, you are free indeed. And that there's nothing that no man can say or do to you that would matter because Christ has set me free. I don't care what you think about me. I don't care what you do to me because I serve a God that is my refuge and my strength and he loves me the way that I am. He picked me up and he turned me around. God loves me and there's nothing you can't do to me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. See, God is concerned about us. I want to encourage you to talk to your children. Find out how they're feeling. This is difficult for them. Not to be able to be with their friends and not to be able to do the outside activities with friends that they were able to do. And the thought of maybe going in your senior year and not being and being doing the activities and having that school spirit that they so look forward to having. Find out mentally how they are. Find out how, give them a health check. Find out what they're doing and give them a scripture in the Psalms to help them to de-stress. This is a stressful time. We can't just think about us. They're little people, little ones. Big little ones. They're about to begin life, and some can't even get a job because the way that the, 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 the thing is happening, people aren't hiring as much. So they can't get jobs. But the Lord is their light. Let them know that God is their salvation. 
even uh, my daughter, she wants to get a job. In a sense, I was kind of glad that she does not have a job because I didn't want her being around people. I had to let that go because I know she wants, she's at that age where she wants to grow. She wants to get out there. You, I can't shield her from this. I had to trust God. So that's when I said, we make in declarations. Lord, I trust you. You're my light and my salvation. Whom, I, whom shall I fear? I trust you, God, in her life that you will protect her. And I have to let her go. Go ahead and get the job. You know, you want to say, I don't know how long I'm going to be a, taking care of you, but at this time I was like, I'll take care of you forever. Don't worry about it. But, her, but because of her wanting to grow, she wants to spread her wings. And I can't hold her back. Thank you, Jesus. So I want you to take a minute to find out what's causing you to distress, to be in distress. What's causing you to be fearful? What's causing you to, to be afraid? And I said my fears, and I said my fears to the Lord. What's causing you to feel depressed right now, and I need you to talk to somebody about it. And don't be afraid. Oh, they, they're going to look at me crazy. They're going to look at me that I'm not a Christian. Well, I hope, want you to know Elijah... All that he went through, he was about to lose his mind. Jezebel was after him. She was mad that he killed her prophets. He was, he was about to lose his mind. He's ready to give up and die. So you can't tell me that saints do not go through periods of time when they mentally are just not there. They experience the stressors. They experience these things. And we need to talk about it. And then we need to turn to God because he is our strength. He is our light. He is our salvation. He is our strength. Let the greatest book in the world, the Bible, get into your spirit and your mind. Let the, the one of the greatest chapters, the book of Psalms, read it. Let it med meditate upon it. And let God give you a word to carry you through. Because he is your light and your salvation. Whom shall you fear? He is your strength. When you are, when you are weak, God is made strong. Amen. He doesn't expect you to be walking around that you're strong and you can take anything and everything coming at you. He knows we're human. But Christ in me, the hope of glory, is my strength today. So God is your light and your salvation. Those of you that don't know Christ today, you need to give your life to him. You need to serve him. As I sang today, he'll pick you up. He'll turn you around. It's not to say that your situation is going to change right immediately, but you know you have hope that Christ is on your side, and he will guide and direct you. The Holy Spirit will guide and direct you to where you need to go and what you need to do. And you're no longer walking, a dead man walking, a woman walking. But now you'll be walking by faith. Let's look to the Lord. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you now for this day. We thank you, Lord, in the midst of all that we're going through. Your eyes are in tune, your heart is in tune, and you see your people. And some may be suffering in silence, God, because they're afraid to even talk, to let somebody know they have anxiety with this. But God, the church is supposed to be a hospital. We're supposed to be a place where people can come to. We're supposed to be people of God that people can, can, can share their innermost secrets and feelings with and not look at them in a condemning way. So God, I thank you right now that you are light and you are our salvation. My salvation, we make it personal. We are committed to you. That means we have a relationship with you when we say you are my light. And so I pray this morning, God, for those that are maybe going through, maybe feeling spirit bouts of depression and anxiety. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that they, can, they, they confess that they are going through this, God, and they know 
God, that your spirit right now is renewing them and touching them in their minds, helping them to be able to go through what they thought was going to break them. It didn't. Thank you, Lord, that they're standing upon your word, that you are their light and their salvation, and whom shall they fear? You are the strength of their life, of whom shall they be afraid? Thank you, Lord, they have nothing to fear. Thank you for touching the minds today. Thank you, God, for healing. We also, God, we rebuke the suicide spirit that seems to be ramping up its head. Lately, we're hearing people on, uh, young people committing suicide on YouTube or not suicide on you, but those that they're on YouTube and they think they have nothing more to live for. But we built that spirit. We pull that stronghold down. We need the intercessors to be praying for these things that are happening, depression and anxiety. And those that call upon the name of the Lord be praying for suicide spirits and, and all the mental illnesses that are affecting those that have been shut in. God, we... Pull down these things now in the name of Jesus and we speak life yes. over the minds of people. You are the lifter of our soul. We love you, God. We rejoice in you because you are the God of our salvation. Psalms 18 says, Lord, I will love you. I will love you with my strength. Lord, you, Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My shield and my horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Thank you, Lord. We serve a mighty good God. So I pray that and decree that over those watching today, those here in the sanctuary, and those that will be watching in the future. Hallelujah. Yes. God is your light and your salvation. Thank you, He's the strength of your life. Thank you. We pray, God, for souls right now in the name of Jesus, those that don't know your Savior and Lord. We thank you that one soul today will come to know you, God. One soul today will be added to the kingdom of God. For your glory, God, save them, God. Let them confess you with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. Let them believe in your, their heart that you raised them from the dead. Yes, we thank you, God, because we were once in their shoes. And you saved us, and you can save them. Thank you. So we give you praise, honor, and glory. And we're going to end today. Let's give the Lord a hand. We're going to end with Psalms 27 as a song. Amen. We're going to play it. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, before we do that, I have announcements. That's right. See, I'm, I'm ready to close out. I'm ready to go on. I'm in the spirit. Oh, Jesus. I should have did announcements first, right? So I just want to make announcements to you. The Women's Fellowship is meeting on the 15th at 1030 on Zoom. I believe a notice has gone out for you, so make sure you respond. This Tuesday, praise the Lord, we will have our Bible study, Christian Character. The, the facilitator will be Minister Michael Hunt at 6 p.m. Make sure you get on. I believe that also went out to you. Please respond. Amen, amen. Amen. Sister Doris Holloway is recovering beautifully, and we praise God for that. Continue to keep all those on our sick and shut in, in prayer. And I do want to make this one announcement here. Um, and this includes Matthew Lofton. I've been trying to say this every week, but he thanks his church family for praying for him. And as you, we all know, he's in a prison. And they have had the COVID, and they had to separate some of them, a prison in Florida, and they had to separate them um, and from you know, each other to protect them. But he, he praises God. He said, the Lord Jesus is coming back real soon for his children. And he just wants us to continue to keep him, up, keep him in prayer. He had a health scare, but he's doing better. But he says, Lord willing, I will be home October 8th, 2021. So continue to keep him in prayer. He has had a long journey. The Lord has blessed him, has kept him. But Matthew, we're praying for you, and we're keeping you in prayer. We thank God that he's protecting you and shielded you, and you're just doing wonderful things by keep serving him. And remember, God is your light and salvation. Also, the youth ministry. We will not be giving out bath packs, but they are planning to give the youth 
um, some baskets of things that they will need for school, uh, to, even if they're online, doing things online at home. So the youth ministry will be doing that, and they will be giving them out this fourth Sunday. So they will be coming to your homes and giving out those gifts to the, our students that are going back to school. And please keep the kids in prayer. Um, like I said, this can take a toll on them mentally as well. And we need to talk about it with them and find out how they're doing health check. We make sure our body's okay. We need to make sure they're okay too mentally and physically. Amen. So at this time, the blood drive. Oh, yes, the blood drive. Yes, as some of you may not have known, um, and you may not have saw the post on Facebook, we, you know, with the blood drive, we had to move it from here because we lost power. And so we went to another uh, place on 541, uh, Burlington Lodge, and we were able to save 39 lives with that blood drive. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand. Yes. Sister Dora, she planned that beautifully, and she, she, she stressed over it, but God was so good because he relieved her of the stress, and it was worth it. It was worth it, even when it looked like we may have to cancel over there because the lights were flickering and the water started coming down. God still opened the made away, and we're able. People came, and you supported her beautifully. And we need to continue to support our children when they do things. Let's support them. Let's attend it. Let's be there for them. And that made him feel made her feel so good to see her church family coming out, and even strangers who she didn't know come. So we thank God that for the thirty nine lives that have were saved through the blood drive. Amen. Amen. And we'll do it again. I encourage her to do it again, and she will. Amen. So right now, we're going to close. Thank you all for, for tuning in. Uh, the services for Mother Pearl Gregg, as you know, she went home to be with the Lord. They will be this Friday. The viewing's from 9 to 11. Anybody can come to the viewing, but the service at 11 o'clock is for the family. So we respect that and um, continue to keep Patty Patty Johnson in prayer and the rest of her siblings. And um, they're just so beautiful. And you can see the spirit of Mother Pearl in them and shining brightly in them. And just encourage them in the Lord. Amen. So we want to keep that in prayer. So we look forward to that homegoing service. We know it'll be a joyous time because Mother Pearl loved the Lord. Loved the Lord and loved to give her testimony. Amen. Amen. So without doubt, we're going to close out in prayer. Let's all stand and those of you, touch your screen or do whatever you can. Lift up your hands and worship the Lord. We're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you and give you glory for who you are. We thank you for, God, you are an awesome God and mighty God. And we know that there's nothing too hard for you. So we thank you for touching our minds today and our hearts. God, making us aware of things that are around us and that you are our deliverer. You are our hiding place that we can go to. You are our light and our salvation, and we give you glory. So bless us out this, throughout this week, God, as we continue to praise your name, and help us to be able to encourage somebody else. Help us, God, as we share our testimony with someone that we pray that some soul will come to know you, will come to you as Lord and Savior. We thank you for doing it, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray thanksgiving. Amen. 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 I want to teach you, to you tonight. The Lord is my light, salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Mm. The Lord is my light, salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yeah. Whom shall I be afraid? Hi.
share.